Okay, Robin Tumut slash Clark. Yep. I won't worry. I won't worry about their surnames. No. Uh, their grandchildren are Aaron and Rebecca. Yep. And then it's Wendy Tumor and her husband is Darren yeah. Wilkinson. And they have one daughter, Gemma Wilkinson. And there's a grandchild, Dakota. I don't need I, I don't need to talk about the relationship as long as I've just got the names. Don't worry, I just got that straight from the funeral director's notice and that's probably the way they want it. It doesn't matter. And um, I was wondering, um, would you like the cross candle again? Yes. So after I've done the welcome. I'll just say Lois is going to like the cross candle, that'd be lovely. And, and um, I've just said it, look, it's going to be simple and informal. Yeah, and well, it's exactly the same service yeah. that we did for Sylvia, basically. Except we won't have the pictures on. Um, and, um, hold on. Yeah, look. Thank you for all the work that you've done on this. It's been incredible. Yeah, it's all the little things and then take the one and you're getting some information that then has to be passed on to somebody else or checked and that's constant. I now appreciate what you used to do. Yeah, <laughs> that was the, all getting things together, all the organisation. Yeah, there's a fair bit to do actually. And you've got to make sure it all, it's all right. You've got to check and cross check. Leave somebody out or something in the street.
welcome to this service of remembering and of celebration for the life of Margaret Jumith. My name is Reverend John Barr and I'm a former minister here at West Ebbing Uniting Church. Now, before we begin, there's just a few announcements. For those of you gathered here in the church, please ensure that you wear a face mask and I'll see everybody is, but thank you. And uh, we're able to sing, but face masks still need to be worn. I think it might change in about two days' time, but I've got to stick with it for the moment. Um, if you need a toilet or a washroom, um, they're located down the stairs underneath the church or through the hall, the adjacent hall. People will show you. An afternoon tea will be served in the adjacent hall after the service. And of course, you're all welcome to stay and to share together. Friends, we are here to acknowledge the passing of Margaret Anne Tumith and to affirm the Christian conviction that while death is the end of human life, it marks the beginning in our relationship with God. Margaret died last Saturday, the 4th of December, at the age of 85 years. She lived a good life and will be dearly missed by all of us. And I know especially by Kerry, by Robin and Robert, Wendy and Darren, together with grandchildren Jessica, Erin, Sam, Rebecca, Gemma, and great-grandchild Dakota. Today, we grieve the passing of Margaret. Earlier today, Margaret was laid to rest in Rookwood Cemetery. We are sad that her life has come to an end, but we also gather here to give thanks and to celebrate Margaret's life and all that she meant to us. In a few moments, memories will be shared. I had the privilege of being minister here in West Epping to Margaret and also to her late husband, John, some years ago. Both Margaret and John were faithful members of this congregation. They both made significant contributions to the life of this community. Today, we gather here in this church to honour Margaret and to celebrate her life. I welcome you all to this service of remembering and thanksgiving, to you all who are present here in the church, and also to those who are watching through our streaming service in other places around the country. I'm now going to ask Lois Rees to light the Christ candle. There's a, a candle on the communion table, and we always light this at the beginning of a service because it tells us that Jesus Christ is the light of the world and that through the flickering flame of the candle, we are reminded that his spirit is always with us. Humid days don't help, do they? <laughs> Thank you, Lois. I'd like to share with you some words from the Bible that we all may, may face the future with hope. And I share these words. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, though they die, yet shall they live. And whoever lives in me, shall never die. I'm sure that neither death nor life, nor things present nor things to come or anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. And let's come before God now in prayer. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you for all your wonderful gifts to us today. And we especially thank you for the life of Margaret. We come before you with heavy hearts because Margaret is no longer with us. But we do so with the understanding that you are a God of love and that you are a God who cares. 
for a God who is with us through all the trials and all the challenges of life. We give you thanks for the assurance that you gift us in your son, Jesus. And we humbly pray that your spirit will be with us now as we remember Margaret, as we celebrate her life, and as we say goodbye. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now we're going to stand and sing a hymn. One of the things that um, I learned after being a minister here at West Epping for a number of years is particularly the older people used to love all the traditional hymns, which are real classics and I believe never ever go out, out of date. And one of those is the hymn, Now Thank We All Our God. So please stand and sing and the words will be on the screen. Now it's time to remember and to share those stories. And I invite Wendy to come and share with us. Thank you. I feel like Gladys. <laughs> Taking off my mask, sorry. Um, I'm also having many flashbacks coming here. I spent many uh, after hours coming here with mum when she was doing some floral arrangements and that, and felt a bit special coming here after hours and getting to walk up here and that. Although downstairs always gave me the heebie jeebies. <laughs> um, firstly, I'd like to say how thankful I am that we were able to do a memorial service today for both mum and I'm going to include dad there as we lost dad in August and due to lockdown and having the restrictions, we weren't able to have a big celebration, although we had a nice burial for dad. Um, sorry, I'm getting there. <laughs> uh, Special thanks to Lois for helping organise this and everyone else that was involved as well. Uh, Mum and Dad, they've probably spent close to 60 years with this church. Um, and as you were aware, Mum dedicated many hours being involved with church functions, 
flower arrangements, ladies' fellowship, uh, probus, dinners and suppers, the fates and many more things that were involved. Uh, we also went had our Sunday school here. We got married here and I think most of the grandchildren were um, christened here, although Gemma can't remember it. I don't know why. Oh. <laughs> Margaret Tumas, mum, nana, was born to Nola and Les Crawford on the 2nd of February 1936. She had one sister, Janice McKay, who lived out at Peak Hill near Dubbo. Margaret attended a few different schools. Um, they'd moved around due to uh, her dad, my grandfather, being a bank manager and had many different postings. She went to Burwood Primary, Alstonville, Byron Bay Public School, where she was Ducks in 1947, then went on to Mullumbimby High School and finished her high school in at Sydney Girls High, again, where she was Ducks of the school in 1952. Mum often talked about Byron Bay and we were very surprised of how long, little time they actually spent up there. It was probably about a year or so, but it made a big impact on her life. I think it was more the beaches because it is a beautiful part of Australia up there. Uh, Mum went to work in the Bank of New South Wales after that and she continued working up and after being married and up until her first child, Kerry, was born. John Tumor, Dad or Jono, as many of you might know him as, what mum used to call him, was born to Lillian, known as Doris, and Alan Tumith on the 18th of July, 1934, and was the only child. Born in Concord, sorry, can't even speak it, yeah. Born in Concord, lived in Concord and Burr, the area, um, up until when he moved to Epping years ago. Uh, he attended Concord Primary School, Croydon Park High School, and then went on to Ultimo and Granville uh, Technical Colleges, where he became a sheet metal worker. And that's, I think he had a job that came to Epping. He worked then as a, um, worked on printing machines, and you would often find him at home tinkering in the, gar in the garage, uh, fixing something. Nothing could be thrown out because everything could be used for something. Dad also loved the coast and spent many of his childhood good years, travelling to Edelong, Bulleye and Lake Conjola. John and Margaret met at West, Wesley Methodist Church at Concord West through the youth group, sorry, youth group and teaching Sunday school. They later married at the, at the same church on the 26th of September 1959. Church was always a big part of their life where they met some of their lifelong friends. One of the longest known friends, Coralie Cropper, who is here today. And thank you very much for all your phone calls that you used to make to check up on how they were going. Uh, Dad brought land in Kent Street, Epping back in 1957. And they built their house there um, where mum and dad lived again up to about 60 years before moving down to Winona. On the last visit to Kent Street, I'm sure this one of, must have been one of their saddest days when they said goodbye to their home and knew that they weren't returning. We ended up having a picnic in the park, getting fish and chips. I think it was along Plimpton Road somewhere, fish and chips. And we ended up having a great time where we were all on the swings, seesaws, and had some great photos of mum and dad on the seesaw as well. Mum and dad, of course, had three children, Kerry, 1963, followed by Robin, and then, of course, myself. Third time lucky, myself, Wendy. <laughs> Whenever I talk about my childhood, it is filled with lots of holiday stories and how lucky we were that we got to go away. Either down the coast to Fisherman's Paradise, going to Foster, or tra travelling around in the caravan somewhere around New South Wales, or heading out to Peak Hill, where Mum's sister lived, and visiting our cousins, Sue, Barb, Jenny and Lee. Mum would catch up with Aunt Auntie Jan and Dad would get to experience the country life. <laughs> We'd all often go on walks around the farm um, ride motorbikes, get in the ute, just get in the car and take off driving somewhere. We all learnt to drive at very young ages. <laughs> uh, or Dad would go shooting out with Uncle Don. We also had our first plane flight down to Tasmania, which was a good experience. Due to Dad's work, Mum and Dad got their first over so, sorry, overseas trip to Switzerland and Germany. And they got the travel bug after that. Mum wanted to go somewhere, so they continued to travel. Um, even when we moved out of home, they were doing the caravanning with many of the church friends, of course, around Australia, and their adventures didn't stop there. They then went on to New Zealand, Canada, Alaska, European cruise and the British Isles. Mum would spend many, many hours putting all the photos into albums, 
there wasn't a photo that you couldn't pick up that mum hadn't written on the back of or inside the photo album, stories of their adventure or something that had happened on the day. Both mum and dad spent a lot of time around the house doing their own gardening, renovations. They put the pool in themselves, their own driveways and ended up, ended up being owner builders and built that holiday house down at Lake Conjola, Fisherman's Paradise. They spent a, spent a bit of time down at Fisher's when they first retired, fishing, exploring and becoming involved with the community. And they really enjoyed it when the grandkids came along and would have holidays there. Mum was always cooking or getting cups of tea and having an excuse to buy oysters and prawns to eat. Jess also remembers favourite times, being sitting, just sitting in the bean bags on the deck and Nana bringing out afternoon tea and Dad teaching all the grandkids how to fish. Talking to grandkids, of course, there was five, Jessica, Erin, Sam, Rebecca and Gemma, and more recently, grandchild Dakota, who was born to Jessica earlier this year. Dad didn't get to meet Dakota due to COVID and the lockdowns. However, Jessica and Kerry were able to come down to see mum only about two weeks ago. And Kerry said she, can't, she will never forget mum's smile that she had on her face seeing Dakota. Over the last four years, and after selling the home at Epping, they lived at Marco Polo, the nursing home in Winona literally 500 metres down from my home where I live. This enabled me to spend many hours with them. That also meant they got to do, I got to do all the hospital trips and doctor's visits with them. Uh, when they moved in, Darren, Gemma and I ended up adopting Tootsie, their little beloved toy poodle. <laughs> Tootsie was of course able to visit the nursing home. And on the first day that mum and dad moved in, of course, Tootsie came with us to see where they, her mum and dad's house was going to be. And that afternoon she actually escaped from our house and we didn't know where she was until the nursing home rang us. She had ventured down to the nursing home to go and spe spend time with mum and dad. She was always dad's little shadow. She's now my little shadow. Wherever I go, she's right at my feet. <laughs> uh, dad loved playing on his computer and mobile phones, regularly staying in, co regularly staying in contact with Bruce Sheldry and where they often f share their funny emails that Dad always passed on to us. <laughs> this also entertained him with looking up and documenting family history, something Mum also did um, with the Rose side of the family and is a lifelong member of the Rose Family Society, descendants of the first freak settlers in Australia. Dad had Parkinson's diagnosed in 2011 and Mum had dementia, which was picked up maybe about four to five years ago one of the reasons they ended up in the nursing home. They were in the independent care, but dad being dad, you couldn't tell him to slow down or ask for assistance. Had a few falls, so of course he had a hip, opera, hip replacement operation. Uh, this led them to going into a higher dependency care. The staff at Marco Polo always had really nice things to say about both of them. They always knew John and Mar Margaret as the couple, as there wasn't many couples in the nursing home. And they would always comment how dad was just such a proud gentleman and mum always had a smile on her face. Comments to me were always, oh, they're such a lovely couple. They are so nice people and they're my favourites, <laughs> things like that. Of course, there is so much more that I could say about mum and dad. Um, I will we'll always have the treasured memories of our childhood and how they were there to help us with everything. Uh, we will forever remember them eating our bowl of blue ribbon ice cream, as there was always many tubs in the freezer. <laughs> no matter if it was lunch or, dis or dinner, there was always dessert served. We were very lucky. We had two of the most loving parents anyone could want. We we're always close to mum and dad, and they are a major part of our lives, and we will miss them forever. Until we eat again, mum and dad, you are together again. Thank you. Thank you for those lovely words, Wendy. Now I'm going to ask Carolyn Button to share with us. Thanks, Carolyn. I had the pleasure of working with Marg for many years on the monthly men's dinners. You've probably all heard of those. We had, we had fun while we were working hard, but thanks to Marg's great organisation, and I know she relied very much on John's help in many ways, from helping with the shopping to the cutting up the meat for the casseroles and for fruit platters and, and the works. Marg was a delight to work with. And when the time came for her to retire, 
She handed the reins to me, but she helped and encouraged me so much along the way. I couldn't have done it without her and all her beautiful bookkeeping that she kept. <laughs> Marg was also a long-time member of the flower roster. For more than 36 years, I couldn't find records beyond that, but at least 36 years, often teaming up with Marg, Marion Sheldrick, and they created beautiful floral arrangements together. A vital member of Our Ladies Fellowship, Marg was always involved in office-bearing roles. We have missed you, Marg, and we will continue to miss you, but you will never be forgotten. Thanks, Carolyn. And now I'll invite Bruce, who's going to speak. Bruce Sheldick's going to share with us. We can all have them off after Wednesday, is it? <laughs> Thank you, Reverend John, for the opportunity to say a few words about our dear friends, John and Margaret. And all to the, to the girls. I think uh, Marion and I were lucky enough to uh, be at all your weddings and uh, they were wonderful times. But as, as uh, Carolyn just said, Marion and Margaret worked very much for men's dinners. Somebody said they were like two peas in a pod. Uh, but they worked very closely together for men's dinners and uh, over, I don't know how many years, at least 20 years that I could think of. Marion used to leave home at one o'clock to get up here to peel potatoes and whatever else happened up here. They also were involved in doing catering at the Centre of Ministry, Wilmington Drives and all the things they did in Ladies Fellowship together. Uh, they, they had wonderful times. The flowers, Marion would spend hours up here with Margaret doing wedding flowers and other occasions and whatever. Margaret was also a secretary of the property committee for a number of years. I guess a lot of people would forget that, but Margaret was a, a wonderful secretary to the property committee. Well, it was after the place was open, but, uh, but there was still a lot to do. We still had many things that had to be fixed in this building because it had to be done properly. And we all agree with that. We, we had some wonderful times with John and Margaret. We, uh, as mentioned, we, we did those trips to uh, New Zealand and the river cruise and Canada. Uh, so uh, Marion and I had some wonderful times together. And then of course there was uh, the caravan crew. John Hall named it the West Having Wanderers. And there were eight caravans, if you think about who they were. And uh, we, had, we had some wonderful times. And Jill's not here today. I remember one time we were down and Dennis broke down and we all had to stop and we all, there's some great photos of me with me backside sticking up with me head inside the engine compartment trying to look at the engine to try and find out what we could do to try and get them back on the road. But we didn't get back them back on the road. They had to be towed home, unfortunately. We had some wonderful times in caravans together and uh, they, they were wonderful times. But time slips away, unfortunately, and uh, things change. And as I was looking at the caravan mob and, and, and we lost John Norman's wife, Di. She was, she lost, we lost her and then we've lost Dennis Rowlandson and, and we've lost Margaret and John. So the caravan days will never be the same as they were in those early times when we, we had all those things and John took photos of us. I won't tell you what happened early in the morning. When it was time to get out of your caravans, John took some interesting photos, but we, we had some wonderful times together. <laughs> you know, the, the gazundas that come out of a caravan, <laughs> they all had to be emptied. That was before the days that caravans had toilets in them. Anyway, it was all fun. We, we had some great and wonderful times <laughs> together anyway, but things move on and, and we've lost, you know, John and Margaret were here for over 60 years. We, we've been here for just on 50, 50, 57 years, going on to 58. And uh, unfortunately, my little girl's not with me. I better be careful what I say, otherwise I'll get choked up. But anyway, there we go. 
So, so Margaret and John have been called home to their, their father above, and uh, we're sure that they're, they're, they're on a trip together, and they'll get in a caravan together up there, and, and they'll meet up with other people, and they'll have a wonderful time up there. That's what we all believe. So that's what I believe. So God bless you both, John and Margaret, and, and all your family, because it's been a wonderful time that we've had knowing the, the Chermuth girls and all their family and Margaret and John. So God bless you all. Thank you, John. Thank you, Bruce. We're now going to hear some readings from the Bible. And first of all, Psalm 121, I'm going to invite Jessica, if you would like to share that with us, come and read from the lectern there. And then um, after that, I'll invite uh, Gemma to come and read from John's Gospel. Thank you. So I'm going to do um, Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will ne neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. John 14, 1 to 6, 18 to 9. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. Thank you, Jessica and Gemma. Gatherings like this one are really important. They enable us to support families who are grieving and they provide opportunities for us to remember and to celebrate. And they offer a moment for us to value who we are as a community as we come together at times that are truly significant and important. And we're stepping uniting church is very good at this as 2021 comes to an end as uh, comes to a close we'll be aware that we've lost quite a number of members this year and you people here at we're stepping always come together to support those who are grieving this congregation's good at remembering and celebrating you value who you are and you give thanks for those among you who pass away. And most importantly, in doing this, you continue to shine a ray of hope in a world that seems to be becoming increasingly complex and confusing. Margaret was a truly valued member of this congregation, as we know, for many years. We've just heard this afternoon about the many contributions that she's made. We've seen how much she was appreciated. And we've joined together in an act of thanksgiving for her life. We've also heard about Margaret's life as a wife, a mother, a grandmother, a great grandmother and a friend. And we truly give thanks for all that she was. There's also 
another facet to what we're doing here today, and this is to acknowledge that Christian faith was an important part of Margaret's life. Christian faith is an important part of West Epping's life and for many of you who gather here today. Friends, faith is important in every aspect of life. Faith is important, particularly at this time, as we face the reality of death. Faith is important because it points us to a reality much bigger than ourselves. It opens our eyes to a dimension in life that offers meaning and purpose in a world that can be so finite, confronting, harsh and threatening. And here, Christian faith assures us that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Absolute nothing, not even death itself. In the words that we listen to today from the Bible, from the writer of Psalm 121, we hear, the Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. These words were written many thousands of years ago and they have inspired people of faith ever since. For God will keep you from all harm. God will watch over you, both now and forevermore. Then Jesus himself had something important to say. In John's Gospel we heard, My father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? Friends, these words declare that death is not the end. It is not a brick wall or a black hole that many people think it is. Rather, there is much more to it than this. For you see, death is the completion of this earthly life. And it is the beginning of a new life in the full presence of God. Margaret believed this, and today we claim this gift of eternal life for her. So let us continue to give thanks, to celebrate, and to always remember that death is not the end. For Margaret, and I will add John as well, is in the loving, eternal care of their God. And for us all, this means there is a light at the end of the tunnel. There is hope and there is a future for all of us in eternity. Amen. And Lois, Reese is now going to lead us in some prayers of thanksgiving and prayers for the family. So thanks, Lars. So let us pray together. Loving God, it is at these times when we stop to remember that we realise the treasure we have had in our midst. We give you thanks for Margaret, mother, wife, aunt and friend. We give you thanks for her faith and for the trust she placed in you. And we thank you for her commitment to following the Christian way and involving herself in the life of your church. She was a friend to many and a real treasure to us all. Margaret was gifted in many ways and although softly spoken, she was always willing to give of herself, no matter what the task. We thank you for her quiet efficiency as she led a team of helpers in the kitchen. 
And we thank you too for John, who provided enormous support to her on these and many other occasions. We loved her creative ability with flowers and the partnership with her friend Marion in arranging the flowers for special occasions. We thank you for her adventurous spirit with happy, carefree holidays with family and friends. Gracious God, we want to acknowledge the commitment and love she and John shared, putting this love into creating their own home and raising their beautiful family. We think of the family now and pray for them. For Kerry, Robin and Wendy, who will be feeling sad at this time. It has been a long goodbye for them because of the illnesses their parents suffered. But may they know you are with them in their grief and that they are not alone. May they know of your presence and strength and of your understanding love for them. And we pray too for their husbands, for Robert and Darren, and the grandchildren, Jessica and Sam, Erin and Rebecca and Gemma. And we pray too for Dakota, the dear little grandchild. And as they think about the wonderful legacy that Margaret and John have left, we pray that there will be a growing appreciation of the influence John and Margaret have had on their lives and pray for your continued care for them all. Amen. Thanks, Lois. We're now going to sing again, and this time we're going to sing a hymn that we know that Margaret was, I think it was one of Margaret's favourites, and I think for many of you it is too. It's a hymn from the Methodist hymn book, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. So let's stand and sing.
please remain standing. We had remembered Margaret, we'd celebrated her life, and we now come to a prayer when we will commend her to the loving, eternal care of God. And so, Heavenly Father, by your creative power, you gave us the gift of life. And in your redeeming love, you have given us new life in Christ. Rejoicing in your gift of eternal life and confident in the love you have for all, we commend Margaret into your merciful keeping. And I invite you to say together the Lord's Prayer if you are able. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Forgive us today for our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Loving God, we've entrusted Margaret into your eternal care. Now help us to remain strong in faith as we go from this place. And as we continue to live the lives you have so graciously gifted to us. When we're anxious, help us to know you're always there for us. When we are sad, help us to remember that we can trust you in all things. When life becomes a real struggle, help us to hold on to that living hope which is ours in Jesus Christ. For you are and always will be our gracious, loving God in this life and in the next. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. And please now join us for some afternoon tea and for an opportunity to share and get to know one another. Thank you. Mm -hmm.